Washington, a beautiful town on the Potomac. Springtime in Washington is especially nice. Flowers in bloom, cool Potomac breezes, a feeling of love in the air. But underneath it all is something heated, something rotten, undermining all that I hold dear. It's the... Well, wait. Let me start at the beginning. My name is Al, and I'm a cinema junkie. There's nothing like the high of a good movie. It surrounds me in an orgy of light and sound, soothing away the cares of the day in a glorious bath. On the other hand, there's nothing worse than going cold turkey on a bummer film. That's where the critics come in. They've raked me over to coals once too often with their garbage reviews. There's one that's really gotten under my skin. Name's Arnold, Harry Arnold. That man has put me on more one-way bad trips with his hype than I care to remember. That's where this story begins. I just read Arnold's review on the Rowdies, a Burt Reynolds comedy. Let me quote a bit. A terrific little film full of Burt's special wit, complex characterization, and loaded with atmosphere. Well, let me tell you, I'm a sucker for atmosphere. So I headed over to the MacArthur Theater for a look. I got to the theater early in the afternoon. Nice time. Not too crowded. Feet don't stick to the floor, no line for popcorn. My blood really started pumping as I stepped out of the sun into the cool dark of the theater. I was ready for a mainline celluloid high. When I came out of the theater, I thought my fucking head was gonna split. Talk about rotten movies. That piece of trash was gliding through my veins and cruising around my mind like it owned me. Yeah, Arnold had raked me over the coals one more time. This time, I had had it. He wasn't going to write any more reviews. Right then and there that I wrote out a mental contract on him. And the way I felt, you could make book that a hard rain was gonna wipe that creep down the streets and into nothingness. I waited outside the post building for days waiting for Arnold to show his ugly face. I was gonna blow him away. One day I saw someone familiar coming out of the building. And it was Silly Phyllis, the food critic. For a moment I thought about bumping her off, remembering her soggy asparagus at one of her favorite spots. But I held back. A time for everything, I told myself. And then, finally, he emerged. That fastuous render of movie verdicts. A thousand bad titles flickered in my head, and a thousand bad soundtracks resounded in my ears. I had him in my sights. Last minute, I held back. A quick death would be meaningless. I had to look him in the eyes when he died. He had to know why. A fiendish plot stirred in my mind. Now all I needed was patience. Patience and my vengeance would be complete. I tracked Arnold for weeks. Everywhere Arnold went, me and my new companion a very large bag with something special inside would follow. We followed him everywhere. It took all my resources to follow Arnold. At times I needed inspiration. The 
sometimes help came from unexpected sources. I tell ya, Arnold's trail led me through some of the seamiest parts of town. some of the most rural parts of town. Sometimes I felt I was just beating my head against the wall. But I knew if I kept my nose on the trail, that one day he was gonna slip and I'd have him. Then one day in a nearby park, I cornered the critic. All right, Arnold, turn around and prepare to meet your maker. Sounds like grade B dialogue. What's your problem, come shoot? You, Arnold, you're my problem. Every time you call a movie great, it stinks. I hate to think of all the money I spent on those movies, not to mention popcorn and cab fare. I think you're over-emoting. It's a pity. This could have been a good scene. Listen, Arnold. You suckered me into every rotten movie turned out in the last 15 years, and it can't go on. Don't you understand? It just can't go on. Excuse that moi. Ah, you make me sick trying to weasel out of responsibility. Well, this is the end for you, Arnold. The proof is right here, here in this bag. Oh, what you got in the bag? Every review you ever wrote. 15 years of trash, you pig. <laughs> You're kidding. My reviews? <laughs> Look at this. Hey. My first review. You know, my, uh, my mother's got this one framed on the mantelpiece right next to my brother Saul's law degree. Maybe you don't comprehend what's happening here, Arnold. This is it. The end. Finito. I have here the proof of your crimes, and I'm gonna make you eat your words. It's the only way. The only way. Have you read this? Leonard's use of scenery cannot compensate for what really... All right, Arnold, that's enough. Eat it! What? Eat it! Eat the goddamn review! All right, all right. I'll eat the review. Now this one. Wait a minute, this is Vincent Canby. Oh yeah? How'd that one get in there? Okay, this one. Jeez, you're serious. What have I ever done to you? I'll tell you what you've done. For 15 years I've suffered because of your reviews. Washington suffered because of your reviews, and I'm here to get revenge for all the pissed-off moviegoers. So eat it, Arnold. Eat your words. Hey, take it easy. I think we can work something out here. How would you like a season pass to the Biograph? A lifetime pass to the Biograph. I can work it out. I know the owners. I'll throw in some popcorn, some Coke. What do you say? Give me a call on Monday. I think we can work something out. I gotta be going. Where are you going, Arnold? You're a bigger fool than I thought you were. Do you think I could be bribed? This thing is bigger than me. So cut the shit and eat the reviews. My final offer. How would you like to write your own reviews? Have them published, have them printed up. Put my name over them, 
Now go in. What do you say? Is that a deal? Okay, okay. <laughs> just, uh, just eat this one. How's that? Arnold was desperate. He tried to convince me that some of his reviews weren't that bad, but I wasn't buying. I knew what I had to do. And then there was one, the last review, the Rowdies. Killed you, Arnold. You're out of my life for good. I saw you choke on your own words. You died the way I used to die every time I saw those rotten movies you liked. Why the fuck can't I sleep? Every night it's the same. I see your bloated face in front of me, stuffed with your own poison. Then I wake up in a cold sweat, I grab a beer, sit here and think about all those stupid movies and all your stupid reviews. Jesus. How can I get rid of you? Don't you see? I did what had to be done. Somebody had to kill you. Everybody who loves movies was being suckered by you and your pat reviews. My God. If it were up to you, we'd all be knee-deep in shit movies like the Rowdies every day of the week. Oh, what's the use talking about it? It's the same every night. I gotta get through one night without thinking about you. It's the only way I'm gonna beat you. So good night. Goodbye, you pig. Where are you going, gumshoe? Do you think that tawdry little scene lets you off the hook? You may have saved Washington from me, but the price you paid may be too dear. That's right. Settle down for a good night's sleep. <laughs> Just close those eyes and drift away to dreamland. You know... Old sport, where I am, I've got plenty of time to think. And the more I think, the more I'm reminded of those great movies I reviewed. Somehow, black ink and paper just don't do justice to those films. You've got to see them in the mind's eye to really appreciate them. For example, Al, do you recall that terrific little film, The Rowdies? There was a great scene where Burt Reynolds tells Sally Fields about his boyhood. Touching scene. Do you remember that scene, Al? Hmm? <laughs> Somehow, I thought you would.